Hey guys, I'm back with a quick tip video where I show you how to find hunter slime the easy way. As you can see, I have no problem catching them, but some of you do, so I wanted to help you out by sharing my slimy secrets. There are no hacks, anyone can do this, and it works for me every single time. To prove that, I'm actually going to show myself doing it right now so you can follow along. Hunters can be found in a few places, but I only ever visit two spots. The first one is near a lake in the moss blanket, so let's head there now to get started. Ah, uh, here we are, fresh out of the teleporter, and I'll get straight into my tips. Tip number one, I find the most hunters at night just before morning, but they can appear at any time of day. So when I get here, I sweep the area first. If you're lucky, you'll snag one right out of the gate like I just did. If not, don't worry, you're gonna stay in this area through the night, so no need to run around the rest of the map, and I'm gonna walk you through what I do to make catching hunters here easier. Tip number two, clear things out. And this is my main strategy because it solves a ton of problems. First, hunters are hard to see when they go invisible, so you don't want a bunch of slimes and largos running around blocking your view. You want to get them all out of the way, and I do that by tossing them into the lake. Or pond, if you want to be pedantic. If I kill them all, <coughs> I mean, if I sent them all on vacation into the sea, more slime would just spawn in to replace them. Keeping them in the lake is like population control. As long as there are a ton of slimes present in the area, you won't have a bunch spawning around you on land. I also throw food in the water to keep them busy. Second, it's a pain in the butt when you finally see a hunter and it eats a plort before you get to it like a filthy little dirty face. Clearing out all of the plorts makes that less likely since the only plorts left will be the ones getting pooped into the lake. That means any hunter that appears will have to head towards the water if it wants a bite, and it's pretty easy to catch them before that happens. Third, I don't have to worry about the tar, because all of the largos are in the water. As soon as a tar forms, it gets wrecked. Tip number three, get up on the mushrooms for a better view. The middle mushroom I'm on now is good for being able to rush in either direction, and the mushroom off to the side is good for seeing the entire area in front of the lake. But you want to bounce around and do a sweep every once in a while just to make sure you're not missing anything. Tip number four, sound is key. As you hear things spawning in around you, go check it out and send any slimes you don't need back to Capistrano. You also want to keep cleaning up the area and shooting food into the lake as you come across it. It kills time. And if you don't feel like enough new slime are spawning, get rid of some of the ones in the lake. So that's it. I've set the scene. And now let's fast forward and see how many hunters I can get on this stakeout. There goes number two. There goes number three. Well, I didn't catch that one before it got to the water. No! But that's okay. Night's not over. A forward! There goes number four, and I think that's enough. And like I said, I always find hunters when I do this, usually three to five of them. And as you can see, it doesn't take very long. It was 20 minutes from the time I showed up to now. So if you're hankering for hunter slime, head to this lake, follow my tips, and I guarantee you'll find them. But if your luck is somehow really, really bad, I have one more spot to show you, and it's in the glass desert. So if you haven't unlocked the glass desert yet, which you should because it's gorgeous, you might as well bail out now. For everyone else, let's head to the desert and catch some more hunters. All right, we're back at the glass desert and this hunter spot is a little bit harder to find than the other one, so I'm going to quickly walk you through getting there. 
If you take a look at the map, you want to get to the center of the glass desert where the ranch portal is. That's the best landmark. So let's get there by keeping to the right. And excuse me if I pick up some painted hens along the way. I've got a lot of mouths to feed. All right, we're here at the portal, can't miss it, and getting to my hunter spot from here is easy peasy slime and easy. You just head through this gate to the left. Head down the path where the feral slime usually are. Hang a right. And there you have it! My second hunter spot is at this oasis. Since this is such a small area, my tips for this one are like me, short and sweet. Tip number one, like before, do a little sweep of the oasis to make sure no hunters are already there. Again, I got lucky here, you might too. Um, and this is also a great spot for tangle slimes, and it's where I found my first gilded ginger, which is how I got a golden gordo. That's a video for another day, maybe. <laughs> uh, tip number two, get rid of all the slime because you want new slime to spawn in until you get hunters. I flush the slime out by tossing them out of the oasis and turning them into tar so they'll eat each other. Isn't that fun? And since this protective barrier kills any tar that cross into it, I don't have to worry about them eating any hunters that spawn since they'll most likely spawn inside. Long story short, rinse and repeat until you've had your fill of hunters. So let's fast forward and see how I make out with this one. Hello to number two. Hello, number three. And number four. And again, I think we're good. It's been about 10 minutes from the moment I arrived at the Oasis to now, and that's really not a lot of time at all. So I'm gonna head back to the ranch, drop these bad boys off, and wrap this up with my final tip. This one is a matter of preference, but it's still a great tip to keep in mind. If you want your hunter slime to roam free like I do, instead of keeping them in a corral, the overgrowth is a great place for them. It's far enough away from the rest of the ranch and other slimes that you don't have to worry about them eating your chickens or random plorts, assuming you set things up that way, and there's a constant stream of hen hens for them to snack on, so you don't have to worry about feeding them. A win-win for all involved. Except for the hens. That's it for this toasty tutorial. Let me know if there are any other Slime Rancher tips you want me to cover, and check out my Slime Rancher playlist by clicking the icon at the top of the screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here soon on the Far Far Range for more ranching shenanigans with me and Miss LeBeau.